In this episode, I visited Greek monastery in Florence. I work on the vineyard and talk to the local pilgrim and bury the lady. So little little story about this monastery, how it was built. So the father Ephraim, he used to be, he was a monk from Mount Athos, from Greece. And uh, he had a necessity to, health necessity to go to America and uh, do a surgery. And when he arrived in New York City, so many people were visiting him. And he, he decided to stay here. He decided to stay here and then when they came to Arizona and they wanted to buy this property, uh, him and other, other father, uh, when they were walking around this property here, they, they tell to each other, they said, do you hear the sound of the bells, of the church bells? And he's like, yes, I, 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 I hear the sound of the bells. And then they said, don't tell the mortgage guy, because they're gonna, they gonna like understand that we're really interested into this property. So that's how this, uh, they bought this property afterward. There was nothing here, nothing but cactuses, nothing like if you go like five miles away from here, it just um, nothing but jumping cactuses, chola cactuses, saguaro cactuses, nothing. So they were building everything here from, from zero. Father Ephraim, uh, he was purchasing the trees himself. He was putting access plant this tree here, plant that tree here and uh, they were working really really hard and for the for the monks that coming from Greece it was really difficult to adjust to the 50 45 to 50 degrees weather Celsius which is for Arizonans like it's 110 115 Fahrenheit it's it's really hot in Greece but it's not as hot as here it's a different heat and the biggest adjustment was was the heat and I know that because I talked to the to the one of the monks and he told me this story and um, so when they start building that uh, when they start building that uh, they were trying to figure out like what to do with the with the water problem because if there's no water uh, there's not gonna be a <laughs> not gonna be anything here to be honest and then the father Ephraim uh, told to the people that were digging the hole there for a water he said you have to drill here and they said sir there's no water here he's like trust me I'm taking the whole responsibility you have to drill right here they start drilling and there was no water and he's like please drill more they, they were they were keep drilling and they, there was no water there and there's like yes keep drilling there's a water here and they were they drill a little bit deeper and then they discovered underground river so so like right that you see the what is the that blue blue cage yeah so those are the pipes the main pipes which is, are going down like uh, 1000 feet wow. so there was nothing here and he said yeah. water wow well, Like uh, between 800 and 1000 gallons a minute.
water, you see here the water canalization. This is not like canalization from the main canalization from Phoenix or, or whatever in Tucson or Florence. They found the water underground. And can you imagine how, how do you know, like, how do you know that there is a water here? And I remember Father Ephraim, he, he, he died, he passed away 97 years of age. But when we first came here, in 2017 or 2018, I don't remember, he used to sit there in the middle of the road. He was so old, so they used to bring him with the truck and he was holding his cane like this and people will pass and he will, he will bless them. And I don't know, like I feel like he's, he had a different feeling, he had that different aura around him, different energy. Every time like I was like just passing by him, he was reflecting the love and reflecting I can't even I can't even describe that reflecting calmness like sometimes like if you if you come here pissed off or if you come here really like upset or really really mad you will be you will be cured like in in one second. You will be like oh what? What I was mad about it's a uh, it's a place of miracles and he passed away at 97 years of age and I don't think there's gonna be another person like him and he was like pretty much like saint, like Jesus Christ uh, in nowadays. Hello everyone, this is Vasil from Very Cool Jeep and here I'm located in one of the most holiest places in United States and in Arizona. I'm located in a Greek Orthodox monastery which is called St. Anthony Monastery. It was built long, long time ago and I'm gonna leave the history for tomorrow in the morning when I take you with me together on a walk and I'll show you the beautiful monastery which is built in the middle of nowhere but today I tried to get inside and uh, I tried to get a room but they have a gate over there and the monk told me that only people with reservations can come here uh, so he can open the gate and they close the monastery after 6 30 but he said like you're more than welcome to camp here by this side this sign says the St. Anthony Greek Orthodox Monastery in English and Greek. And here I am camping right here. Right now I'm just gonna open my tent and jump inside and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow in the morning. Hey, good morning everyone. Right now it's 1.33 in the morning and I just woke up. They have opened the gate and they are letting people inside the monastery. So right now I'm gonna try my second attempt to get into the monastery and I think the service starts like in 15 minutes so I hope we make it on time Good morning Morning. You guys letting people inside? Huh? Do you let do you let people inside for the service? Yeah. Where you come from? From mess. I was camping right here outside. Oh yeah. By the side. Yeah. Okay. I can't here all the time on Saturday, Sunday, but I I've been here like a long time for a night, you know, service. Okay. So you want to just for stay for service? Well, I want to stay for service and maybe stay like a five to five four days. Yeah. And you did you call before for that? I didn't. Huh? I didn't. So you have to check them. Oh, check. Somebody. Yeah. What is your name? Vasily. Vasily. Yeah. From Mesa. From Mesa. Okay, Vasily. I open the gate for you. Yeah. Thank you, you. You check after the service. You check and see if they can have a room and if they can let you to stay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you.
I just got breakfast from the monastery and that's how it looks like I have like a little uh, slice of bread looks like with with some nuts and uh, this is a asparagus and coconut porridge and I just put some almonds on the top that's what they eat here in the monastery Hey guys, so it's uh, 5.25 in the morning and it's visible right now outside and now I'm gonna show you how the monastery looks like since there's no monks walking outside, which they told me like if there's no monks and no people you can kind of film, film the buildings, film the flowers here and there. But if I wanna do like something like a documentary like a high level video then I, I I need to have a blessing from the father Philaret or father uh, father Poisi so right now like it's 5:25 I'm a little bit sleepy I should be resting but I'm going to show you how this place looks it's just amazing it's so beautiful This is a little chapel that they built. United States of America, Arizona desert that is green in the winter and burning hot in the summer. The border with Mexico, ideal place for prisons, nowhere to run. This monastery is named after the first hermit monk in the history of Christianity. The second most visited place in Arizona after the Grand Canyon. Elder Ephraim founded this place coming from Mount Athos, Greece. Guys, it's so nice and peaceful here and I'm walking like right now and I'm just amazed how a couple of monks, I believe there's like 48 monks here living here and how, how they keep this place clean and it's unbelievable, it's like an oasis, like a, it's like an oasis in the middle of nowhere. When they came here there was nothing. Here just a desert, but look at this beautiful place. I'm walking like, I don't know, like a hanging gardens of Babylon or it's just amazing. Like I, I feel like I teleported back in time. It's so beautiful and peaceful, even if it's hot and like driving five miles away from this place. Looks like desert and there's nothing else here. Just uh, like Florence, Arizona, there's a prisons and there's uh, jails here and here you go we have a monastery here which is sitting in the middle between Phoenix and Tucson in the middle of nowhere and you can see it from the highway but once you enter inside there's something magical happens here it's just the feeling 
I feel so relaxed, I feel so calm. And I can't describe you this feeling, it's such an amazing feeling. This is the Saint Dimitrius of Thessaloniki, of Solon. And I have a really, a really cool story about this little chapel. I reckon this chapel is closed right now. But when I was here two years ago, I had a conversation with the monk inside. And he told me a story that I'm kind of scared about it. I'll tell you the story a little bit on. So we're walking towards the Romanian church right now, which is ahead of me. It's such a beautiful place and right now, six in the morning, guys, it's the best time to come over here. After the night service, it's just amazing. It's not hot, it's not cold, it's just the perfect weather. Nobody is walking outside and if you want to do like a video or if you just want to like a spiritual inner relief and you just want to sit here and enjoy the weather, uh, listen to the singing of the birds and just the calmness of, that, of this place. It's the best time to come like really early in the morning. So we're walking right now inside the Romanian church. That's a typical Romanian style of a church, as you can see. The sign said on the door that we have to use the side gate. Oh, I think this is closed, so we can go inside. Well, the officially the monastery opens like 10 in the morning i think that's when they're going to open everything but to be able to film inside the church i need a blessing and uh, i don't want to get in trouble i don't want them you know like to tell me that i have to leave because you know like i respect of course we're in the monastery and i respect that but guys, even if you don't go inside, but look at this beautiful place. Just look how everything is so nice and organized. They work outside. As you can see over there, the trees are growing. Maybe you guys can see from here. I will try to zoom in. So they're growing olive trees. They have orange trees. They have tomatoes, they, everything. They grow a lot of stuff here. They grow, like I said, oranges, lemons, grapefruit, tangerines, everything, everything to sustain them. And this is all made, made by men. Can you imagine that? It's so nice and beautiful. Just imagine how much work you have to do here every day to clean this like fallen leaves and blowing the leaves and like cutting the excess grass and everything on the top of you know on the top of the post on the top of praying it's just amazing how they can survive here and especially in arizona hot arizona desert when it gets like 110 and 115 degrees fahrenheit 40, between 45 and 50 celsius it's amazing how those people can adapt to this situation. It's just like they're so strong, physically strong, spiritually strong. Their mind is strong, they're unbreakable. This is, this is just amazing because a normal person cannot live here. And because we need to live, we got used to living in a social media. And as you can see in the distance, there's a, another white chapel there. 
And this one is for sure it's closed because I was here like a couple of years ago. And you actually have to go to the bookstore, to the bookstore here. And it opens at 10 o'clock and you get that key from this church. I will try to do that later on to show you guys that church. Nobody goes there and uh, I hope like that I can just kind of sneak in and film what's inside. But this church l reminds me of the Santorini, Greece. The Santorini looks like exactly like that. Here come at him uh, of hospital this. I посмотрел on там лежит так как бы уснувший в коме. Но я верю, что что-то почувствовал, что это еще не конец. И я сел там, а тот говорит, да поехали уже все там. Еще сфотографировал его, как он лежит, как мертвый, да? А я, а я говорю, да я посижу, я потом как-то доберусь, знаешь. И, короче, я сижу, а эти медсестры видят, что я там э, сижу возле него. Ну, что-то, говорит, э, я говорю, это самое, пришел проведать его, да. и они говорят, да ты можешь и быть возле него. Да. Я не знаю, почему, как. И, короче, я дней пять возле него на раскладушке пробыл. Да, и когда он устал, встал и пошел... А эти все ну, трубочки, которые там к нему подключались, да, это, все это поехало э, вместе с ним, да. И то есть я позвал сестру, говорю, что он э, встал. И потом после этого я сразу начал говорить с ним. Э, и он мне рассказал, что он видел. То есть я понял, что он не был в раю, а в другом месте. Да, да по, по его рассказу, потому что я много литературы духовной читал, как выглядит рай и как э, ад. Короче, он был в аду. Клиническая смерть. Да, да это было э, как бы кома, да, несколько дней. И он мне рассказал, что он видел там, э, куда он э, как бы кем э, как бы его кто отвел, да? И по рассказу я понял, что он видел там каких-то детей черных, э, темных, как в Индии где-то или что-то. И родители их сильно били, просто даже говорят, кожа от, от, от мяса от, 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 отходила, да, настолько э, сильно их били родители. И он увидел свою дочь танцующую, да, а вот дочь увидел, да, там, я еще удивился, как, э, дочь еще жива была, э, то есть живая дочь, но, ну, короче, такой сон рассказал, а потом э, мы собрались, взяли такси, да. приезжаем, а старец Ефрем ждет и машет нам, как все равно специально поджидал, это. И он боялся спать один, и я жил с ним в, в этом Марви, в доме на колесах, потому что он был, не, ну, как тот человек, который в аду побывал, он потом уже э, как бы другим становится, э, как бы уже э, дру, другое отношение к жизни. Вот. И однажды как-то он показал, как дочь танцует. А я говорю, дочка, у него жена вьетнамка. Я говорю, это вьетнамский вид борьбы. У них как тазисюань у этих китайцев, только у вьетнамцев свой вид борьбы. То есть занимается этой бесовской борьбой. То есть это как бы с духами связано. То есть. И вот э, старец как раз как бы нас встретил, как все равно ждал, что он молился, и как жизнь вернулась к нему, он вышел из комы. Понимаешь, это один из таких случаев. А, были, были еще тут а, некоторые интересные моменты, 
Один послушник ушел из монастыря, потому что его отец протестант, пастор. И говорит, что ты тут, сынок, делаешь там? Поехали домой. Ну, поехали. Он 7 лет здесь послушником пробыл, да? Я его знал, этого, он на кухне работал. И потом, а он начал собирать э, оружие стрелковое, то есть, то есть э, по сайдам смотреть. И этот человек сказал, что смотрите, э, как бы кому надо здесь, что он собирает там все оружие, зачем ему это надо. И вот... Э, Однажды я жил там внизу, в бейсменте, и один был еще человек. Ему сказали срочно уехать. Я один остался, да? А, вот. И тут это самое, прибегает послушник, который здесь объезды делал, говорит, там застрелили человека там или что, что такое. Я думаю, что он там рассказывает. И потом узнаю, что этот Послушник приехал, когда монахи выходят по четкам молиться в 12 ночи, да, он с оружием приехал там, э, и к монастырю, не, не с основной дороги, а с каких-то там кустов уехал, там, не, как бы, здесь есть грунтовые дороги, и подъехал, и почему-то вдруг застрелился или что-то там произошло, а этот как раз поехал посмотреть, и смотрит, это Джон, то есть э, наш послушник. И я в этот момент читаю книгу старца Ефрема, что трое человек ушли из монастыря, но один вернулся, чтобы меня зас... убить. Но между нами стал старец Иосиф. В этот момент я как раз считаю, что между не этим человеком, э, который приехал с ним разобраться, стал старец Иосиф. Странное дело. Почему я в этот момент это читал, да? А, как бы совпадение, что... Потом а, был пожар здесь сильный. И вот пожар дошел, вот здесь вот все прогорело, была фотография. До монастыря монахи тут ворота сломали, там трактором хотели бы что-то там пахать. Но старец вышел, что-то помолился, и ветер стих, ветер гонит э, огонь, да? Да. А за... И пожар закончился возле монастыря. Дальше не пошел. Понимаете? Он мог бы пройти еще милю вперед, или не дойти там несколько километров, да? Но он остановился, и была фотография в этой трапезной, там, где рабочая кухня, да, этого пожара. Я не знаю, может, убрали. Просто здесь люди невнимательны. Они как бы, как в Иерусалиме, каждый день идет чудо, то есть чудеса. Но люди этого не видят. В Иерусалиме каждый день чудо происходит. Это святая земля, я был в Иерусалиме. Но люди не видят. И то же самое здесь. Он, он э, если посмотреть, он там пошел, он там сел, он там поговорил, там все. Ну, как, э, я когда приехал, я же не знал, что он старец. Да? Если бы мне не сказали, я бы и не, не подумал тоже. Но я сразу обратил внимание, что э, мне сказали, что это вы нам писали письмо полтора года назад. Вы как он мог знать, если у него куча писем, что я полтора года назад написал ему письмо, что я еду сюда, и немножко тут задержка получилась, я сейчас разберусь с людьми тут. А, говорил, но обычно люди его не слушали. Обычно, да? Guys, it's day three, four o'clock and fifteen minutes in the morning. And uh, I got a grapefruit for breakfast, some sausage patties, macaronis, and this is a pretty much like a bread with feta. Yeah, that's the breakfast. That's my breakfast for today. Bon appetit, everyone. Enjoy.
We are climbing up right now. We are going to this beautiful church, which is behind me. I walked here. I think it's closed, but even though if it's not if it's not open, I still want to show you because it's located up in a hill, and you can see all the beautiful valley there, guys. Look at that behind me. The whole monastery, such a beautiful place. If you can see far, far away there, there's my Jeep. And look at this big property. And that's what I was talking about, all those trees. They have moringa trees, they have orange, grapefruit, lemon, they plant tomatoes, they have potatoes and everything there they grow. Wherever the mother earth can provide, they grow everything here. Such an amazing place. Look at this beautiful place. So that little breakfast that I just ate, like a little porridge, asparagus and and coconut with six almonds and a little loaf of bread. I'm starving right now and can you imagine they, they eat that much and that's pretty much it. I think the next time they're gonna eat is after the after the afternoon service i believe i'm not sure i might be wrong but the afternoon service starts like around one or two o'clock and ends like no it starts like at 3 30 3 25 and it ends up like 4 30 pm and then then when they have their dinner here which is really good they cook super nice if you come for a dinner, man, there's such a nice nice food that they're making here, but I'm just trying to compare how much junk we eat and how much junk we can absorb and we all the time like craving for something we need to eat, we need, we're cooking, especially when we overland, we, we overeat all the time and those guys are eating just as, as little as my two-year-old and they're all alive and they're probably much healthier than you they have less visceral fat and overall fat and they're more healthy because they constantly working walking they all the time moving they're not sitting on one spot which is really good for their health and they're all healthy i think right now when we drive to alaska i'm gonna implement that kind of style of life i'm gonna be i'm gonna go more vegan because i'm kind of tired of shopping and eating like uh, meat and eating that junk food and 
I'm so tired of that. I'm gonna probably go a little bit vegan, veganish something. And maybe if I eat if I eat meat, I'll eat some chicken or some seafood. That's gonna be it. Hey, what's up, guys? I still didn't sleep. I actually was doing some work. I uh, <laughs> I asked them if they need help in a monastery, and they made me transfer some stuff. And now I got some gyros. Here they they have a little cafe, guys. One guy he's uh, selling food, so I got some avocado wrap here. So I'm just gonna eat right now and probably try to go to sleep. It's too hot right now, and I'm so tired, exhausted. Like I have no energy at all. And just like my eyes are closing. The kids like it. Even my baby she drums all over the place, and uh, it's a really nice setup. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. Looks like the Jeep is attracting so many people here and uh, a lot of people just going to the monastery and coming outside there. Looking at the Jeep and this man, he has his own shop over there. I just bought that sandwich from him and he was like, wow, this is so cool. He's going back to Greece after a couple of years and he's like, he, he was like really, really happy to see something. He's like, I'm going to build a Land Cruiser or maybe buy an RV or something. And he's like, it's pretty nice to see stuff like that. You know, to see other people's build. It's pretty cool. Say hi. <laughs> say hi, I'm Greek. How do you say hi, I'm Greek? Ohine. Ohine. <laughs> you want to walk? You want to record? <laughs> How old are you? Say <laughs> two. <laughs> you're not two, you're four year old. Yeah, two. No, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> you want to be a vlogger? Now it's recording. Hello? No, no, no. I already pressed. Now it's recording. You can speak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Bye bye. <laughs> Hey guys, so it's right now it's 12.45 I just came back from lunch, they had lunch at 11.30 And one of the monks drove by my jeep and we chat with together and he's, he was Romanian He's from Romania and he went to lunch right now He said that they need some help We are going to the winery and we're gonna probably do some work help the monastery here I don't think I'm gonna film that because it's uh, there and the elder is gonna be there watching but I'm gonna ask him if I can just like do like really quick b-roll just to show you guys but I'm waiting for him here under the awning to pick me up Alright guys, so here we are, right now, and the field, St. Anthony Monastery, and they gave me this thing, so I have to go and, and clean that stuff right here, all the weeds, and here we go, this is my tool for now, there's no fun. Alright guys, so I finished this line, line 33 and line 32 is completely done. Everything is nice and cleaned all the way there. Uh, that's what the monk said. I have to clean the weeds between the, between the uh, grape trees. That's how the monastery is probably making its wine. They're making their own wine here. This is the winery, vineyard. He said make sure not, don't, don't film the monk, there's another monk. He's working on the other side. 
Alright uh, guys, so I'm done for today. It's so hot outside. I'm running out of water. It's uh, it's 3 p.m. and I'm calling it quits because I want to sleep. And that's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Hey everyone, this is gonna be like my last four days here. I'm not gonna record every single uh, day. But tomorrow is gonna be very important. And if you guys see behind me, there's a cemetery. So I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to help a monk. I'm gonna help him dig one lady out of the grave. So her daughter is going to take, she wants to take her mother remains back to Serbia. So tomorrow I'm gonna help him dig out, of, uh, dig, dig that remains of her mother out of the grave. And she's been there for 10 years. So I don't know, I'm kind of like going from the yard worker to the grave digger here in a St. Anthony Greek Orthodox Monastery. All right guys, so at the cemetery right now we're gonna dig one lady like i said yesterday she's from serbia and uh, i'm not gonna record the whole digging but here's the cemetery the lady name is anna so we're digging her out after 10 years being here they said she's in the third row and uh and yeah, she's gonna get picked up and sent back to Serbia. And that's that's my seventh or eighth day here. I count the days, I just don't have any service here, anything. And later on, I'm gonna be cleaning the cemetery here, cleaning the weeds. I know it's a... That's the lady. Huh? The lady is inside. We're done here. So tomorrow they're gonna come and they're gonna dig her remnants outside. Hey guys, good morning. I don't know if you guys can see me. Uh, I guess. I got some nice breakfast, good breakfast today. We have like a fish wrap, I have some eggs and I have a lot of cool stuff here this is uh, like an egg patty, some bread with feta today is the fish breakfast so guys today is my last day, last day staying here in the St. Anthony Monastery in Arizona I feel super good uh, I feel so good, I don't know, after staying here. I missed only one service yesterday because I was so tired, but I, for the past eight days, I was I woke up like 1.30 in the morning 
and I didn't miss any single service. It's uh, I feel so good. I uh, I help like with the physical work, whatever they need help here. I just didn't want to, you know, like just sit around Jeep or like just walk around like doing nothing and uh, offer my help. And I had a lot of fun. I met so many people and uh, it's been a nice, nice, uh, nice experience. And if you guys come here in St. Anthony Monastery, and if you have a lot of time, you can offer some help. They always need help. They need help with like painting, like cleaning, like just like cleaning the weeds, or you can just go around the cemetery and pull the weeds there, which I did yesterday. And it's not that, that big of a deal, but you're gonna help the monks because they can't they can do everything by themselves and if you can offer at least like one hour if you work like at least for one hour they're gonna appreciate that and so that's it from this uh, uh, episode so if you wanna see more of that like I can I can show you more next time because I come here every week anyway but our next stop is the Overland Expo guys like in several days the overland expo west and flag stuff is gonna be there and i will be there so if you guys see me there and don't hesitate to stop me and say hi i will be glad to meet you and uh, see you at the overland expo bye bye